This is Dr. Raj Chanwani. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Oklahoma Heart Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm honored to present this case uh, for TCT Connect 2020. This is a case of a left anterior descending coronary artery chronic total occlusion with proximal cap ambiguity that was solved using IVIS guided puncture of the proximal cap. I do not have any financial disclosures relative to this presentation. This case involves a 67-year-old woman who presented for a second opinion because of worsening class three exertional angina and a known left anterior descending coronary artery chronic total occlusion. The patient has a prior history of coronary artery bypass graft surgery in 2012. She recently underwent a myocardial perfusion study, which suggested significant ischemia in the territory of the left anterior descending coronary artery. Her ejection fraction is normal. Her most recent coronary angiogram revealed severe native multivessel coronary artery disease. She was noted to have a patent saphenous vein bypass graft to the right posterior descending coronary artery, a patent saphenous vein bypass graft to the obtuse marginal, but an occluded left internal mammary artery bypass graft to the left anterior descending coronary artery. And she was noted to have a left anterior descending coronary artery chronic total occlusion, which had been managed medically for the past several years. The remainder of her history is remarkable for the fact that she's already on good medical therapy, uh, requiring sublingual nitroglycerin several times a week. Her physical examination is unremarkable other than mentioning that her blood pressure and heart rate are well controlled. This angiogram demonstrates the left anterior descending coronary artery chronic total occlusion. The proximal cap is ambiguous, that is to say it is very difficult to understand where the left anterior descending coronary artery is occluded versus where the diagonal artery begins. This would make an integrate approach very challenging for percutaneous coronary intervention because it's difficult to ascertain where exactly an integrate wire should be directed. Dual guide catheter angiography reveals a robust collateral arcade of septal collaterals that fit the mid to distal segment of the left anterior descending coronary artery. The lesion length is approximately 30 millimeters As per the hybrid algorithm, proximal cap ambiguity would direct operators to consider a retrograde approach to solve the challenges of the anti-grade approach. This slide demonstrates the efforts that were undertaken to try and cross the septal collaterals to approach the chronic total occlusion retrograde. Despite significant time and effort, I was unable to advance a guide wire across the septal collaterals due to the severe tortuosity that was present um, in these collaterals. Therefore, we redirected our attention to an integrate approach. This slide demonstrates a workhorse wire that was placed distally in the diagonal artery. We have advanced an eagle eye volcano intravascular ultrasound catheter into the diagonal artery so we could perform a manual pullback back into the left anterior descending coronary artery. This slide demonstrates the intravascular ultrasound imaging that was obtained during that manual pullback. Here we're pulling back from the mid segment of the diagonal artery towards the proximal segment. Soon you'll notice the chronic total occlusion appear here as we pull back closer to the left anterior descending coronary artery, you can appreciate the calcification present within the proximal cap of the chronic total occlusion and the vessel here. Um, next, with the IVIS catheter in place, we advanced a Confiance Pro 12 intracoronary guide wire into the left anterior descending coronary artery, directing it towards 
where we perceive the proximal cap to be. By simultaneously integrating the angiographic data here on the right and the intravascular ultrasound imaging here on the left, we were able to puncture the proximal cap with the Confianza Pro 12 intracoronary guide wire. Here on the intravascular ultrasound imaging, you once again see the uh, proximal cap of the chronic total occlusion. Here is the calcification that was pointed out earlier during the intravascular ultrasound imaging. Here, you actually see the echo imaging of the intracoronary guide wire as it entered the proximal cap. Here you see the wire being advanced across the chronic total occlusion. After advancing further with the support of a turnpike spiral microcatheter, a contralateral angiogram was performed. Here you can see we crossed the length of the chronic total occlusion, but our system has actually entered a subintimal space adjacent to the true lumen of the vessel. Therefore, we elected to proceed with stingray re-entry into the true lumen. Here you see the stingray re-entry balloon and uh, re-entry which was achieved using the Estado 20 intracoronary guide wire. A stick and drive technique was utilized for this procedure. After successfully re-entering, we performed angioplasty across the length of the chronic total occlusion using a 2.0 by 20 millimeter Trek angioplasty balloon. Two overlapping inflations were performed. Next, we positioned a 2.25 by 38 millimeter Sierra drug leading stent across the length of the chronic total occlusion. The stent was deployed at 14 atmospheres. The final angiogram reveals an excellent angiographic result with recanalization of the chronic total occlusion, now with brisk flow into the distal vasculature. The mid to distal vessel appears very small in caliber. This is probably due to negative remodeling that has occurred over the years because of the chronic total occlusion. Often, Positive remodeling will happen over the next several months, and uh, usually we do not recommend intervention in the distal vessel if the flow is good. This case illustrates an example of a patient with proximal cap ambiguity. Although the hybrid algorithm would usually direct operators to approach such cases with a retrograde approach, often a retrograde approach is not possible. Therefore, IVIS guided puncture of the proximal cap can sometimes solve the proximal cap ambiguity and lead to a successful outcome in the procedure. Thank you very much for your attention.